Um, so Kara has written how many, like 75, 80 books? I think so. Something like that. 110. Yeah. Um, so this is your 13th book? No, I think it may be 11. <laughs> I really need to know this. You should know this. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> it's the number 10, I think. I think it's 11. Now. Now. Okay, something like that. Okay, um, but anyway, Beneath the Surface was pr it's probably one of my favorite books by her so far. It is highly addictive. It is entertaining. You can read it in a weekend, a day. Um, it takes place on a mega yacht. We'll get to that. Uh, but tell us a little bit about what, what the story is about. Well, I think you've already said that. It's, so it's, um, I think I like to describe it as Succession uh, meets White Lotus on a mega yacht on a weekend trip to Catalina Island during a storm. So what could possibly go wrong? Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. yeah. The family you've created, the Kingsleys, is a very interesting family. Tell us a little bit about the dynamics of this family and kind of where where we're meeting them as we enter the story. Yeah, we're meeting them at the like the pinnacle of the patriarch's uh, power. So it's, it's very successionist in the sense that Richard Kingsley has amassed a huge fortune, and now he has to decide who to leave it to. So he has three kids, and he has two sons who have been kind of close to the family business, and then one daughter who's like not really close, but he still loves her and wants to see if maybe she will be able to be worthy of um, having. Success. She's a little crazy though. Sibley, yes, she is, and yeah, she joins them via helicopter mid yachting, which was really fun. <laughs> okay, how can I get her on the yacht? And she just said, I'll, I'll fly in a helicopter. That's, That's perfect. perfect. Yeah. Um, so you write from multiple POVs in this book. I, how many? Four? I think five. Five. Mm -hmm. It's a big cast of characters. Um, how did you decide which ones we needed to hear from, and how did you decide? when we needed to hear from them because you're very mindful about who we land with for what moments right well you'd think so but it's, i'm a pantser mm -hmm. so okay um, yeah <laughs> so it's pretty much i'll have um, i knew Paige was going to start it out Paige is the uh, wife of ted one of the sons and i knew her perspective would be the one that would start the story because she didn't grow up like fabulously wealthy she was like thinks they're all crazy and she's like oh great now we're gonna get on a boat with all these people so mm -hmm. she's kind of the most normal i would yeah. say of the group and then what happens when i'm writing because i don't plot mm -hmm. is that if somebody's about to give away too much then i uh, cut you the cut oh person. interesting yeah. that's a good yeah. strategy yeah. okay so, like you need to be quiet and then you go <laughs> yeah so what are the challenges that you face when you're writing in so many different voices and how do you figure that out? How do you keep them separate in your head and also separate on the page so that they don't all kind of blend together? My favorite um, approach to multiple point of view characters would be to write down their lies. That's mm -hmm. how I keep them straight. So most of my characters have some kind of lie that they're mm -hmm. um, something they're hiding and so when i figure out what that is then i'll just write down oh that was a lie that's so great so then i know what to come back to later okay on. well that's a good idea but like their voices are different so how do you how do you because i'm always mindful of this in thinking about like the audiobook right yeah. and how do you keep how do you keep their voices different enough so that if somebody puts the audiobook down and then comes back to it within a few words they know who they're with like how do you do that no. Yeah. I mean, I think it happened in my mind mm -hmm. pretty clearly. So they are their own person mm -hmm. by the time I start writing them. So, you know, and then hopefully casting different actors with yeah, different voices. Helps. Helps. <laughs> but, it does. It but, does. I do, but to your point, I think it's it's really important that they have their own idiosyncrasies or mm -hmm. like certain ways they say certain things. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. You are maybe one of the nicest, kindest, most generous authors out there. Um, how does a nice person like you invent such horrible people? <laughs> yeah. They're really, truly awful. They're terrible. They I, really mean, I mean, and it's not just this book. It's all the books you have horrible people in them. <laughs> horrible people. I know. And and my daughter, actually, Avery, who's here today, she's like, Mom, we've got to stop writing all these horrible people. I'm like, no, I think it actually... It, it helps me, you know, I think it helps me process the bad stuff in the world, yeah. you know? And so, I mean, they're out there, these terrible people, and they 
you know, I, I didn't even realize that I was doing this with the story until Best Day Ever came out. And that was my first kind of suspense novel. And I was speaking in front of this group and people were like, where did this guy come from? This is a terrible person. I'm like, I know, I don't know. And then like, oh, my bad bosses. So, like mm -hmm. Paul in that book is like every single one of my sexist, misogynist, like all of their words were all stuck in my head and they all got out through Paul. So I think it is cathartic in a way to be able to, you know, talk to make really, these people do these things yeah, and then, then have bad things happen to sometimes them. Sometimes kill them. Yeah. yeah. It's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so who is Richard Kingsley then? You know, I, he's, yeah. I don't know. I don't. He's not a bad boss of mine. I don't think. I, I. He doesn't really have those words. He's more like. I don't know. Like he's more like a guy on TV that you see just. I don't know. He's somehow famous, but he's he's so feeling like he's above it all. Like he's just he's just living large, and he's been used to living large for a really long time. So, I, I've been fascinated with these billionaires because billionaires just don't. Like they are in the same world as us, but they're not mm -hmm. touching the same ground. Mm -hmm. So they like if they if the pandemic hits, they can go to another country to their seven other houses there in their private jet. Like they don't they don't have the same rules that we have. So they're they're here with us. They, I mean, you might even pass one on the street, but they're like <laughs> they can just go. Yeah. You know? And so that, that's who Richard is. He's like okay. he doesn't really have to deal with like the real constraints of everyday life like we have. He just creates his own world and lives in it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of, I don't. That was kind of fun. Yeah, like picture something like that. I can think of a couple people he is. He might be. But okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say it. No, don't no. say it. No. Uh, how do you come up with your book ideas? Like, how did you come up with this one? Like, where did you get the idea? You have these like horrible people doing these horrible things. Yes. Do you just in like, a beautiful setting? Like, yes. Nice. Absolutely. Yes. So this one, I did, like, my office at home, I can see on a good day, like, Catalina Island uh -huh. out there, so I saw that. And then, um, I guess it was, like, two years ago when I was coming up with this idea, maybe three, um, Rick Crusoe's yacht with, like, mm. cruise by, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, oh, that's a nice yacht. And then we were on <laughs> Catalina Island, and it was over there, too. I'm like, can we get closer to that yacht? Because I just think, wow, so you create this whole, your whole world on your yacht. So mm -hmm. those two things kind of came together, and I'm like, you know, and I like Kelly and Islands, so like, let's do yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is this the beginning of a book series? It is. It's book one. I didn't know that, though, Oh, at the time. Okay. <laughs> so I submitted um, two books for two book uh -huh. thing, and they're like, yeah, we're going to offer you a big deal, but we want two beneath this the surface. Sure. I'm like, oh. oh, well, that's a plot twist, because uh -huh. I thought they were finished, but they weren't. And what was nice about that is... I'm like grumbly about it. I'm like, it was supposed to be just one book. And then like, you know what? Actually, they're still you all could. in my head. Yeah, there's a lot you could do there's with a this. Lot. So, so yeah. I mean, I don't want to give any spoilers out. The book ends. I think it's a very satisfying ending, if not entertaining. Um, no, definitely entertaining. Mm -hmm. But um, like where are you gonna go? Are you gonna do like a Taylor Jenkins read where you like pick a character and go with them and then pick another character and go with them, or are you gonna just stick with the Stick with whoever is in charge of the company. The company. Yes, I, I believe it's an ensemble cast again, mm -hmm. and it's whoever's in charge of the company at the end of it, whoever survives the weekend on the sure. yacht. For sure, because we don't have any ghosts. There's no ghosts. It's just, it's, just, it's just the people who survive. And this time we're going to be having a corporate retreat at a place that might be the Montage, but it's not the Montage. It's called Twin Palms in Laguna Beach, which is like one of those beautiful yeah, yeah, resorts. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all right, where else do they want to go? I'm like, someplace really great. Right, you that know, you can so, write off. Yes. And, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I could write that on them. Remember that? I forget about that. But anyway, yeah. So we're going to be stomping around a place very similar to the montage, not the montage, on a yeah a weekend kind of everybody's the gangs back together, the ones that don't die, and yeah. And so then more mayhem ensues. Oh, it's goodness. called Under the Palms. It comes out May twenty first next year. Has it? It's already written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes out oh, May twenty first. All right. Is that my next question? I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to yeah, skip ahead. Yeah, you can pre-order now. Pre-order now. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, wait. How do you write a book a year? 
I told you. Well, I just think, you know what, here's the thing. So since third grade, I wanted to write novels. I knew that, which is odd, I know. But our my third grade teacher asked us to write to the person we wanted to be when we grew up. So mm -hmm. I wrote to oh, Robert McCloskey of Make Way for Ducklings and Blue Ray Shirsali was my favorite author back then. And he actually wrote back. He's like, dear little Kara, I think he did say little Kara, but anyway, he's like, um, thank you for writing me. I'm an illustrator, not an author. Pick better next time. <laughs> and then he drew a little duck, which was nice. That's kind of cool. Yeah, but so, so anyway, but he wrote me back. But that, like, to me, is like publishing, you know, in a nutshell. Like, yeah, it yes. really is. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> it, it, an email in my inbox. Oh. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so that, um, uh, so how do I write a book a year? So between that letter from Robert McCloskey, very inspiring, and so now, like, there was a lot of life and, like, four kids and a career yeah. and all that stuff. So I think I have, like, a lot of pent-up content. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Okay. And I just, I have dogs at home. So really, mm -hmm. I mean, I have dogs and, like, the job I've always wanted to do. So, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And a supportive husband. Yes, yes. Yeah. And a supportive husband who's taking lots of pictures. <laughs> He's, I don't know what he's doing with that phone. I'm, I'm not even sure that it's on. Yeah, I'm not even sure that it's on. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm, 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 mm. So, Paige, you're, you're, the character you start with is obsessed with water accidents. Like, yeah. she's terrified to be on a boat. She's terrified of going on this cruise. There's a storm coming in. Did you do a lot of research on, like, because she, she's, Anybody. like, <laughs> quoting all that, but also she's quoting all of these, like, boat disasters that have yeah. happened in Catalina. Like, did you have to do all of that research, or are you just making it up? No, 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 it's true. So, okay, so I don't know. I'm sure you guys have been to Catalina, but I, you know, the first time I went to Catalina, all I could think of is Natalie Wood and mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, I'm just like, oh, that's so horrible. And mm -hmm. then our boat driver guy is like, oh, yeah. I need the captain. I'm like, oh, do you tell? You know, and then he's like, oh, for sure she was murdered. I'm like, ah. So then there's also like a list online of murders that have happened, uh, not murders, deaths that have happened on Catalina Island. So many tragic things like listed out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I went deep diving into that. Like there's this guy named something Zora. He was a captain and there's this huge storm. So he went out to try to save these people who had rented a day boat that they shouldn't have been just boating around because of deep, scary mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. So he goes out to the captain to save them because they're adrift with a baby on board. And he like gets the boat under control and like sails it back to the harbor, but somehow he just gets lost and the family makes it back. I mean, there's lots. Yeah. Because huh. you're out in the middle of nowhere. Out you there. really are. You are. I know. It's scary. I know. It's scary. So you could either be murdered or you could just. Yeah, the, and like people would take these, I guess, back in like whenever you would do glass bottom boats and like mm -hmm. big skirts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I picture them being Victorian people out for a cruise and like they would go over and glass magnifies and so they could see all the, you know, people who died very big. Like, so they, yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, there. my. Yeah, I mean, okay. But we don't talk about a lot of that. She does. She does. A lot. She, <laughs> she does. She might have gotten a little upset. She texts a lot and a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she does. Yeah. There was a lot there. Yeah. I can imagine. I didn't get to work at all in, but yeah. Oh, my goodness. No, okay. No more. Yeah. So you mentioned succession. This book is very vibey with succession. Did yeah. you, did the, was the show inspiration for this book or did you have to turn the show off in order to write this book? You know, I think I'd already watched most of the show. I love okay. the show. Yeah, I, just, yeah, yeah. I just loved how everybody's so mean to each mm -hmm. other <laughs> just like fight. Just write your jam it is yeah. jam. And, and i love the quick dialogue and just yeah. you know all that stuff is kind of like bless me all those kind uh -huh. of shows that were people yeah so okay they were definitely yeah inspirational did you spend any time on mega yachts for research no i haven't been on one yet although then we saw another one of these things okay so we're so we're inexplicably in montenegro there's really no reason to go to montenegro but my husband's like we're in Croatia, Montenegro is right there. We should go. I'm like, oh, okay. So we end up at this place, and uh, it's like a hotel, like as you were. And you look out of your balcony, and it's 30 yachts, mega yachts, because all of the oligarchs are hiding there. So all, like, oh. all the bad people in the world with the yacht are hiding in Montenegro because they, I guess, they can't they get can't, it, yeah. know, captured and all this stuff. It was the craziest thing. And so, like, at night, some of them have, like, disco lights. They have all this. So the only people in Montenegro, aside from the people that are on their yacht, are the crew of the people, the, the people that work for the people. Uh -huh. So my sons are, like, at some bar restaurant, and the crew guy's like, 
so why are you here? And they're like, well, my dad thought it'd be fun to come to Montenegro. And they're like, no, no, no one comes to Montenegro. And they're like, yeah, we, we got that now. Thank you. So anyway, but there actually is an app where you can, if you see the name of a yacht, you can look it up and it'll tell you like who owns it, how big it is, how many crew members. It's crazy oh. stuff. And then you realize like how insane it is. It really is. Yeah. Are traveling around on these things. Yeah. And then we saw another one when we were and we did a family trip and we're in the Caribbean and we're like on the sailboat and there's this huge yacht just as it is. And it turned out to be Bezos. Yeah. So at the, that moment, he was lifting off on his helicopter from his yacht and everybody was out on deck, like saluting, like, you know, hundreds of people and they like tooted the horn and he lifted off and they all went like this. It was crazy. Like robots. Uh -huh. It was mm -hmm. insane. So I had to write it up. No, but I haven't been on one. I just like to spy on them up here. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're finished with that. Now we're going on to the end. Okay. I have some writing questions for you. So you're really good at ratcheting up the tension in your books and just kind of making things tenser and tenser and tenser. Yes. Yes. So are you. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> we're talking about you. Okay. So um, I'm wondering, does that happen in like an early draft or do you do the tension part? Like, do you just write the story first and then you layer in the tension second? I think I just write the story uh -huh. pretty much. And then the tension comes later where you're like, this is boring and I need to add more or? Um, I hate, um, I love first drafts and then I hate all that other stuff. I'm assuming <laughs> so, <opposite. laughs> so I'm like, it better be there in the I'm beginning. The you're really? the opposite too. Yeah. 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 Cause I, yeah, I just, I just like, like I love the first draft and then I'm like, it's pretty much perfect. This is how it should be. <laughs> and then people are like, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. And, no, no. And you can do better and let's let, help you do better. Okay. So yeah. So yeah. I, I know because I get all grumpy and then I get those edits and like when you said you had a two-hour call with your editor and I'm like, oh, that would be my worst nightmare. Or see, I thought it was super fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought it was I'm, super fun. I yeah. know, you're like, it's going to make it better. I'm like, I know it does and I'm going to try to, I'm trying to be better about that, but yeah. all in all, that's just my worst nightmare. You don't. I'm like, it's not perfect now. <laughs> you can't send my notes in a text that don't send them <laughs> <send. laughs> Yeah, and then when I open the, like, development editor, yeah. oh gosh i'm like no especially when it's single space and it goes oh i always have oh. mine double space so that i get extra extra pages to make notes on oh. <laughs> the worst i really i really could just like hand it in and be so happy but it does end up making it yeah, so much better i know i, I know that now it can be brutal but it's <laughs> just not fun yeah all right so what has been the best publishing experience you've had so far in the business you've had many different experiences what was what do, you, what do you think has been like the most either the most memorable or the most special or just the overall just positive yeah I mean best thing ever was super fun because mm -hmm. I was writing women's fiction and then I had two years in romance which I'm not meant to write romance because I can't write any you don't write nice people. Like, no, I don't write that. And like, oh, why am I? Why was I in that? I don't even know. For two two years, I was in that. After so was, best day ever? No. Oh, um, women's fiction and romance, and then I had, I had like, best day ever like mm -hmm. popped in my head, and I was at a romance writers conference, and I met with this agent, and she's like, "Oh, so what are you showing me?" And I'm like, I mean, no, it's an editor, and I'm like, "This," and totally not what she was there for. But anyway, so then all of a sudden, she's like, "I love it. I'm gonna make an offer," and so she made an offer, and then. Um, then she called again and she's like, oh, and we're going to make it hard cut and like get out of Dodge. And then she called again and she's like, and we're going to lead a new imprint. I'm like, get out of Dodge. And I remember that. that. And then yeah. they sent me to BEA and it was like, it like was a huge, huge, huge banner. I'm like, that was just yeah. great. That, so that was like one of those dream yeah. not true yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. So that of course is like, I don't know, that was like the, you know, pinch me stuff. Mm -hmm. And anyway, so I love that book. But I mean, I will say like every book is so different and like the like the experience of it is different and you know and I, I kind of like it all mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel really lucky that mm -hmm. I'm here doing this so I don't know that's uh, what has been the hardest experience in publishing for you writing romance <laughs> <laughs> aside from writing romance um hardest you know what here's the thing I'm like pretty resilient mm -hmm. so I it's not 
I don't know. I don't, I really don't think of things like that. I just think like, okay, that was a challenge. I'm going to like power through more than like, I don't know. I guess, is that a bad answer? It's an answer. It is the answer. I think I'll stick with that. Okay. Yeah. What advice do you have for aspiring writers out there? Oh gosh, that's easy. I mean, resilience, right? So like the only way your dream doesn't come true is if you give up. So yeah. like, that's pretty much the bottom line of anything and, and to keep writing. Always. Like that, like, I don't know if people say, oh, my dream is to write a book. I'm like, are you writing one? No. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, but that's the, that's the whole bottom line to it. If you yeah, don't write, then you won't be a writer. But. Right. Okay. All right, we're going to open it up for questions. Anybody want to ask any questions? No, I'm, I'm uh, intrigued on that. So from the romance, did, did, you, did the uh, thrillers come from, like, bad romances, or are you just... Want no, to uh, like get rid of get out of your yeah, mm -hmm. like I I just I think I just was wanting to get darker. So I think mm -hmm. it just my books like my, my women's fiction were getting kind of darker and darker and darker. And then the romance was just my friend started a romance imprint. So I started I'm like, all right, I'll try that. Why not? I mean, because I do think it any kind of writing you do you learn from yeah. so, you don't throw any romance into the thrillers really. No. There's <laughs> no. no romance between the characters on the boat. Not really. Uh, yeah. No. Not really. not really. No. I mean, there's a little sneakiness going on. Yeah. yeah. It's not romantic. It's really not. No. Mm -mm. No, no romance. Are there other genres that are calling to you now that you've been on the thriller train, or is this where you're staying? I think I'm staying here. I mean, I, I, yeah, it feels kind of normal to write about bad people at this point. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's, yeah, it, it, yeah. Yeah, so I like, I mean, I do have like a historical fiction based on my grandmother's story. And like, oh, there's other yeah. stuff that I like writing, but I yeah. think as far as um, commercially and hopefully having them buy stuff, I probably need to stick you know, within this. Although I, do, I would say that to me, my kind of thriller writing is merging more with women's fiction again, too. It's kind of like, because it's not like, you know, that kind of thing. So. Yeah. I think it's more like I don't know what this genre is that we're doing. That's more, I think it's more domestic suspense. Yeah, you know where it has to do with families and relationships and you know right. people who are not being true to who they are and, and that's behaving badly. Yeah, yeah, it's really grown ups behaving badly. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. So your stories don't make Harley nervous, or no? <laughs> he sleeps. I don't know. The senator one was pretty shifty. Oh yeah, we did great talks about that because it's about a cheating congressman. And, you know, he was in Congress. <laughs> and so yeah, we we kind of and did it? Does she? I didn't read that one. Does she kill him? She might. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's cheating and he's sure. messing up everything. Sure. That she had this plan. <laughs> Right. And well, yeah, and her daughter's getting married that weekend. And right. she's got this young intern. And she's like, Are you kidding me now? We've worked so hard for all this. You couldn't just keep it together right. for the wedding. Like, right. yeah, that's just not Harley. Come on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's not about him because he'd be dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's still here. He's still here. Yeah. Although. Sleeping with one hand. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have copies of Kara and Julie's books up at the front. Um, Mike can help check you out. Yay. Yay. Thank you.